Because today's player moves and player move rumors are insufficient and we thus are already looking towards next summer's, Kevin Durant is not happy. He read something speculative about him and the Knicks. That's his mistake in this equation. Why would you read that? And in that measured, way too low-key, slow burn, please, why don't you just get over it and yell at us already way of his, Durant was unhappy with the media last night. After a 39-point win, while nine games in front of the division, a buck and a half in front of his conference. And remember, you can't spell Durant without R-A-N-T. I didn't feel like talking the last couple of days. It was anything in particular? No, I just didn't feel like it. Had anything to do with conversation about free agency? Yeah, that's the conversation you're going to have. I don't think about that type of stuff. That's your job. You've obviously been around the noise for so long. Is it bothering you more this year? Is it louder this year? It's unnecessary. You got to do Ethan Strauss who come in here and <clears throat> just give his whole opinion on stuff and make it seem like it's coming from me. And he just walk around here, don't talk to nobody, just walk in here and survey and then write something like that. And now y'all piling on me because I don't want to talk to y'all about that. Y'all come here every day, ask me about free agency, ask my teammates, my coaches, you rile up the fans about it. Y'all let us play basketball. That's all I'm saying. And now when I don't want to talk to y'all, it's a problem with me. Come on, man. Grow up. Grow up. What's the problem? What am I doing to y'all? You are talking. You are talking. So? Who are you? Why do I got to talk to you? Tell me, does that is that gonna help me do my job better? Nah, bro. I didn't feel like talking. We were all getting questions from fans like, "What's wrong with Kevin?" I just tell him he's playing okay, but he's not talking right now. I just don't trust none of y'all. Every time I say something, it's get twisted up and thrown out in so many different publications. Try to tear me down with my words that I say. So when I don't say nothing, it's a problem. I just want to play ball. I want to go to the gym and go home. That's all. How are you playing? How's the team playing in the last I, couple weeks? I'm done. You know you don't care about that. Okay, after that, Stephen A. Smith joins me here in Fun City, and we'll get to the trade deadline in a minute. Yeah. I'm the guy who thinks that until you get to the World Series, Super Bowl, or the finals, it's okay for athletes not to talk to the media. Mm -hmm. And I'm not having, I don't have a problem with Kevin Durant. Right. What's wrong with me? No, nothing's wrong with you. I don't have a problem with him, uh, with, with Kevin Durant either because he's answered the question on numerous occasions. Now, obviously, he had to talk to the media for the previous nine days, and we get all of that. And the scuttlebutt is that he may probably end up in New York City mm -hmm. with potentially Kyrie Irving. We don't know that, but that's the kind of thing that we've been hearing. It's believed that the Knicks traded Porzingis to clear cap space for two max players. And obviously him and Kyrie Irving are foremost on their list. His relationship with Scott Perry, an executive from his days with the Seattle Supersonics before they transitioned to Oklahoma City, obviously that has something to do with it as well. But in the end, what I peeled from it, Keith, yeah. that's different maybe from everybody else, is when he said to the reporter, you walk into the locker room and you never talk to anybody, but then you turn around and write as if I said it. Yeah. So to me, if that is the case then I think there's legitimacy to any athlete having a problem with you. It's one thing for you to say something. Yeah. If I say something, you know I'm going to say I'm saying it. This is how I feel. It's another thing entirely for that athlete to perceive me speaking for him. And that's the problem that Kevin Durant is having because if you look at the argument earlier with Draymond Green, yep. if you look at the scuttlebutt about him leaving Golden State, where is he going to go? Why won't he stay? Et cetera, et cetera. That kind of stuff can turn people against you. And if anybody's going to be sensitive to that, it's Kevin Durant. All right, trade deadline passes. And like you said, Anthony Davis was not going to be traded, and he wasn't traded. Was this all some scheme to make the Lakers chase their own tail? What, you can what make, went on you, behind the scenes? You can make that argument. Here's what I was told. If Dell Demps had moved Anthony Davis as general manager for the New Orleans Pelicans, he would have been fired. Wow. Uh, he'll definitely he'd lose his job by the end of the year. You know, you had teams in smaller markets on the phone calling him, imploring him not to capitulate to the demands of the agent that is Rich Paul in Clutch Sports, who represents LeBron James, as some would say that is LeBron James' firm, for crying out loud. And they were hell-bent on making sure that 
this wasn't a situation where you capitulated because unlike LeBron James, who was a free agent before he departed, you have a situation with somebody like Anthony Davis yeah. who has a year and a half left on his contract in a small market where they're prepared this June to give you a five-year, $240 million contract. In the event that you stay into next year, you can be the first, first $300 million player in NBA history with a six-year Supermax deal. So they're taking all of those things into consideration and they're saying there's really no excuse for you to leave if you're the NBA, if you're, you're those respective teams. All right, last question. Uh, all this AD drama, he doesn't get traded. Markel Fultz got traded? Hell yeah. About time. Markel Fultz has been an absolute unmitigated disaster for the Philadelphia 76ers. We all know this. That's not to say he can't have a bright career, but clearly the problems don't appear to be just physical. It appears to be something else. In turn, what have you watched the Sixers do? Under the stewardship of Elton Brand, your new GM, a novice GM, mm -hmm. he acquires Jimmy Butler in a trade. He acquires Tob Tobias Harris in a trade. And now you got rid of Markel Fultz. Yeah. And oh, by the way, the two first round and second round picks you gave up to the Clippers, you got a first round pick and a second round pick back that may belong to Cleveland next year. As a result of that, the Philadelphia 76ers with those two players, combined with Embiid, combined with Ben Simmons, are now legitimate title contenders in the Eastern Conference. You can't ask for more than that. One and only Stephen A. Smith, thanks for taking the time. I'd give you the fist bump, but I think we'd both fall. No, we do. All That's right. right. I'm, a okay. bit, I'm a bit long, all right? And, and you, you have more hair than me, and you look better than me. <laughs> Good to be with you, buddy. So the gun, reaction to LeBron and his comments on the business of basketball, and what's, what's next for the Lakers after not trading for Antonio Davis. And oh, by the way, you think the Pelicans and Anthony Davis are in for an uncomfortable couple of months? The Lakers play tonight against the Celtics, and as many as six guys in the gold unis know that management was probably willing to take those unis back and ship them to New Orleans, including maybe Lance Stevenson and Lonzo Ball. And it's not like him or anybody else close to him might be a little sensitive about stuff like that. And now it is all LeBron's problem. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a business, and um, you know there's going to be speculations. There's going to be names thrown around throughout your whole career um, about it, where you're going to go. You know, when you're a free agent, uh, where possibly could you go if you were in trade uh, discussions? Um, if a team wants to buy you out, or you know, or waive you, or it's, it's just all part of the business. And I think. Um, when you truly understand that and you truly uh, know that this is a business, but you give 110% to whatever situation that you're in, um, then you're able to, to live with it. But I know it has to be tough on guys that, um, for the first time in their career, uh, even when, especially if you're a young guy, to be able to hear your name in trade rumors when you've been somewhere um, you know, for a few years. It's nothing I need to get in this league um, that I don't already have. So. Um, Everything else, you know, for me is just like uh, just icing on the cake. You know, I love, you know, the, the process of everything that I go through um, to be able to compete um, every single night, um, you know, put teams in position to compete for championships. Um, but there's nothing that I'm, that I'm chasing um, or that I feel like I need uh, to end my career. Our man on the Laker beat, Dave McMenamin, has just exited Luke Walton's news conference and joins us now. Let's summarize this in three words. So now what? Well, Keith, it's turning the page to this final stretch of the season, 25 games that mean so much for this Lakers team trying to make the playoffs. And Luke Walton said, hey, it's time to move forward. Business as usual. Really, we've talked about it enough. It, it, it's what you said. It's time to move on. Um, so, you know, middle of a road trip, it's, it's not ideal situations for, uh, for all of it. But, hey, this is the NBA. So, um, you know, it's important part of the year for us. Uh, we're just looking forward to getting back on, on the court and, and, and uh, getting better, playing a better game than we did our last time out. So, of course, the Lakers saying goodbye to Michael Beasley, Svi Mikhailuk, Ivata Zubats, saying hello to Reggie Bullock, saying hello to Mike Muscala, and saying, hey, you're still here, to Lonzo Ball, who's not been with the team as he's in L.A., rehabbing that ankle injury. Luke Walton says the team has been keeping in touch with him to make him feel connected. Uh, Lonzo went to Instagram today, put up ditties, we ain't going nowhere, bad boys for life, saying, hey, I'm sticking to L.A. with this team. Anthony Davis, not with the Lakers, Dave McMenamin with the Lakers. Great thanks, Dave. Sage? Oh, and neither of us got traded either, though. I was this close to going on waivers to the Flint Don't Tropics. say that.
Hello from Sports Center. Hello from New York. And hello, Sage Steele. Hello, Keith Olbermann. One of the most stressful days of the year for NBA executives, coaches, and players. The trade deadline has come and gone. There was some chaos, but not so much in New Orleans, Louisiana. Anthony Davis still a Pelican. Once they refused to strike a deal with the Lakers, the fact that he is still there, really not a huge surprise. Woj joins us for more on that in a moment. But first... There were moves made late this afternoon, and the Toronto Raptors made the biggest move of the day, grabbing Marcus Gasol from the Grizzlies. In exchange, the Raptors got a trio of players to Memphis, including 2013 first-round pick Giannis Valanciunas. Also, the Bucks made a move, getting Nikola Mirotic from the Pelicans. Mirotic is averaging close to 17 points per game and gives Milwaukee another shooter to spread the floor for Giannis. The Lakers... As we now know, the Lakers did not get Anthony Davis, but they did move Michael Beasley and Ivic Zubac to the Clippers for Mike Muscala. The move also frees up a roster spot if L.A. wants to grab a potential buyout player. And the number one overall pick in 2017 was traded to the Orlando Magic. Mark Fultz for Jonathan Simmons and a pair of picks. Fultz played just 33 games in Philly after dealing with shoulder issues that altered his shooting stroke, among other issues in Philadelphia. Woj, Adrian Mortonowski. Hi, nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you lately. You are still standing, and we are thrilled at that. Okay, Anthony I'm Davis. I'm sitting. I'm sitting. <laughs> this is true, sitting. Uh, what, what a couple of hours leading up to this, Woj. Anthony Davis, still a Pelican, medically cleared to play again. The finger is fine, so the team now has an interesting decision to make. Do they play him uh, and risk him getting injured for a possible future deal? How do they handle this, Adrian? Well, th there's, there's a lot of momentum in that organization to not play him at all and just sit him. And uh, that's still a decision they're coming to in New Orleans. Now, Anthony Davis and, and his agent, Rich Paul, have said he plans to play when he's healthy. Uh, honors contract finished the season. Uh, but for this organization, the risk of him getting injured, having injury, and that impacting his trade value. He has declared that he wants to be traded, that he won't resign with them, and, and they're going to treat him differently now. That's just a fact of where it is for this organization. Uh, so it, it will be interesting to see how this plays out and, and if the league office will have any opinions on this. This is to have a premier player in the league essentially maybe be told just to sit from the All-Star break on, it's not good for the league. Not a free agent until 2020. And remember, Boston now so happy nothing got done. They <laughs> yes. still have a yeah. shot now, maybe some yeah. time uh, this summer to land him there. Interesting how this Grizzlies situation worked out. The Grizzlies brass told Mike Conley, Mark Gasol, we're putting you out there. They're going to try, try to trade them. Ends up only Gasol ended up being traded to Toronto, not Mike Conley. This is after an emotional goodbye mm -hmm. Tuesday in Memphis. Right. What happened? Well, they found a deal in Gasol with Toronto that they could live with. And they went down the road with Charlotte in recent days. And, and Toronto, Masai Ujiri, the president, came, swooped in really here in the last 24 hours, got this deal done. Mike Conley, there were really serious talks with Utah, with Indiana. Uh, in the end, they just didn't feel like they got enough value at the deadline now. They can revisit a trade with Mike Gasol or with uh, Mike Conley later. Uh, but he'll, he'll finish the year. And I know J.B. Bickerstaff, their coach, is thrilled to have him back. They do think he's really important, especially with rookie Jaron Jackson, uh, to still keep him in the lineup for now. But then again, that's a big pickup for the Toronto Raptors, Mark Gasol going north of the border. Right. Finally, the Markel Fultz experiment in Philadelphia is over. Woj, he's now with the Orlando Magic. So much went on with this kid since being picked number one overall in 17. What was the final straw? Well, listen, th this organization is now fully in the now, and they made the trade for Tobias Harris, Jimmy Butler, and, and Markel Fultz to them had become a reclamation project. For Orlando, they saw this as low risk, high reward. They didn't have to give up a lot for Fultz. They liked the idea of Steve Clifford, their head coach, working with him, and they're taking this as a long-term project. They're not treating him like number one overall pick. They're treating him like a player that needs help, support, and, and they'll see if they can get him back. This is a gifted player. He's still very young, and, and he's still got a lot of – he still has potential for a big future ahead of him. Sure. You look back at the past few years, though, with the Philadelphia 76ers, Okafor, Simmons still coming along, Fultz. It's been a fascinating couple of years, and they're still hanging in there in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, deep breaths. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, you Sage. survived. The deadline has come and has gone. Thank you very much. Thank Keeps you. up to date on anything else if anything comes available. Also, Stephen A. Smith joins us for his take on the Los Angeles Lakers, their future after they did not get Davis. And Kevin Durant went on a rant. If you didn't hear, you don't want to miss this. Keith?
to the association we go. Look at the top five teams in the Eastern Conference right now. Milwaukee sits on top, two games ahead of the Toronto Raptors. Celtics sit third, followed by the Pacers and the Philadelphia 76ers. Most of those top teams, most of them were busy at today's trade deadline. The biggest move north of the border, Raptors making a move with the Grizzlies to bring Mark Gasol to Toronto. He spent his entire 11-year career with Memphis and will now be paired with Kawhi Leonard in Toronto's quest for a title. The Bucks, they're the ones with the best record in the East, in the NBA for that matter, and they nab Nikola Mirotic from the Pelicans. Mirotic gives the Bucks another shooter for a team who's making 13 threes per game this season, which is second most in the league. And the Sixers, once again, they made noise two nights ago, getting Tobias Harris in a six-player deal with the Clippers. Harris in the middle of a career season, averaging over 20 points per game and over 43% from beyond the arc. ESPN NBA analyst Tim Legler joins me now. And Tim, nobody is satisfied apparently at the top of the Eastern Conference standings. Everybody knows, hey, LeBron's out. We got to go for this to win it now. Um, I want to know now, we just saw the standings. Yeah. How would you rank these top five teams right now? Yeah, I had an hour and a half flight up here today, Sage, and I couldn't wait to land to see what happened while I was in the air. Yeah, it's really? amazing what happened at the top of the Eastern Conference. Let's get right into this. I think pretty, pretty clearly number five, you're going to have to go with the Indiana Pacers. No Victor Oladipo. I love their chemistry. I love their toughness. I love their coaching. They don't have enough talent to be able to hang in there. And honestly, Brooklyn might be a better team than them when the playoffs start, but they're seven games behind them. They're not going to catch them, but Brooklyn okay. might be actually more dangerous once the playoffs start. Hmm. Uh, number four, I'm going to go to Toronto Raptors. That might seem kind of low, but it has more to do with these other three teams and what they've done lately, including today, than it does anything with Toronto. I, I think if I have one issue with the Raptors, I don't know if they have enough three-point shooting when they get to okay. a playoff series against some of these teams and enough firepower. Marcus Gasol is obviously a big pickup, but depth and overall shooting might be a problem But that's right happening. There. They, they bring in him, Gasol, and then they drop from two to four. For me, they do, and there's wow. a reason here, and I'll get to it right now. Boston, to me, I'm going to put them at number three. Now, they've won nine out of ten. They're getting their act together defensively and offensively. Guys are accepting their roles. There's a pecking order now. I'm more consistent. I have more faith in what they are going to do every night because they're, they're starting to buy in to what this is going to be. It took a long time, and Gordon Hayward still has his best basketball yet right. to come. I'll put them at number three. Number two, I'll move with Philly up there. Right now on paper, this is the second best starting lineup in the NBA. And they have, they, people worry about their depth. I don't worry about that anymore. Jonathan Simmons comes in, Mike Scott, James Ennis. You get Boban in there. This is a team now that's got the depth, but more importantly, Sage, they've got more guys in their starting lineup you can run your offense through than any of these teams. I think if they can find the chemistry, the which chemistry is a big The chemistry is the one, with Embiid. They could end up fourth or fifth okay. easily if they don't find the chemistry. And for me, number one is going to be Milwaukee. And people might say, well, geez, you know, they added Miritich. Is that really enough to keep them there all year? There's something special about this team. They're top five both ends of the floor. They've got a true superstar leading them. Great three-point shooting team. And now Miritich is a perfect addition. But more, most importantly, this might be the, the most complete team I've seen start to finish. There's been no blip in the radar since the season started. Yeah. There's something special about them, and I love the way that they're coached. I think the Bucs still are going to be the number one team. With going Coach Bud leading the way there. But th this is a very fluid situation. Any Three, of these four, teams five. capable yeah. of beating each other. Absolutely. This is going to be a blast series. the last 30 or so games of the regular season. Tim Legler, thank you.